Okay, it looks like we live. Um, we're live. Hello, Facebook family and friends. Hello, YouTube family and friends. This is Mike Snead coming to you again from Applause Boot Camp. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be coming to you to explain the five banking accounts. Uh, we had a, a lot of people, I had at least three people call the last couple of days asking more details of the five banking accounts. People who actually came to the class and actually going out starting their five bank accounts in more detail. And when I was down in uh, Puerto Rico, I said when I got back here to the uh, United States, well, still in the United States and Puerto Rico, but once I got off the rock and got back into the mainland, I was going to do a video going more into detail about the five banking accounts and how you actually set up those bank accounts. So this is going to be a pretty short video. It's not going to, it's not really much into it on how you do the five banking accounts. I have explained it in previous videos before. Uh, been, it's been a while ago. Now that more people are actually coming to the class and more people are actually trying to apply the method, people have more questions. So I'm going to go a little more in detail on how we do it. I'm just going to go through it one more time what the five banking account method is. And this right here is not something that I created. Uh, this is something that's kind of known throughout businesses. You always going to have, you, you probably heard more people talk about allocating funds, but that's what the five banking accounts is. It's just allocation of funds. This is how you allocate the funds. So this is uh, when funds come in, you need to allocate them and tell them where they want to go. And this is all this is doing. It's just showing you how to allocate your funds. It's not no method I created. It's been around since almost the beginning of time, people allocating funds. Uh, you can go more into detail or how you actually can set it up for your personal life and, 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 and more specific businesses. It's a book called Profit First. If you read that book, it goes a lot more into detail on how you actually do uh, to actually uh, set up the actual five bank accounts and the percentages to be closer to if you if you are somebody who's actually not self-employed or running a business and you want to use in your personal life, profit first goes a lot more into detail and how you can break those percentages up. I'm going to be teaching this from someone who's actually running a business, a small business. This is how I allocate my funds and my small business. It works well for me. It, it's been a lifesaver for me. And uh, people I've given it to that have small businesses. When I say small businesses, I mean companies with less than 10 to 15 employees. This right here works well. When you get into a company that has more than 10 to 15 employees and you're doing with a lot more money, a lot more moving parts, then you're going to need to go to profit first and actually find the percentages that uh, operate better with that actual uh, size company you're working for, working with. Like I say, most of my companies have had 15 employees or less, and this worked well for me. Uh, if you go more than 15 employees, that's some that's some waters I've never been in. So I would just suggest that you talk to somebody who uh, operated a business that had more than 15 employees to tell you where you need to go with uh, as far as uh, setting up your accounts and your percentages there. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and get started and uh, and show you how, how I do my banking account. And this is how I do my banking account right here. And what I tell you to do, I'm going to go ahead and raise this. If you come to my uh, Applause Bootcamp, uh, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need to set up five banking accounts uh, once you leave here. You're going to have what we call, uh, we're going to do here 50%, and this is going to be operating account. And y'all have to forgive my spelling. Because I'm not a good speller. That'd be 50%. You're going to have 25%. And this is what we call our owner's pay. After that, you're going to have 15%. And this is going to be my taxes. And I also pay my insurance out of here, my uh, car insurance. And, and, and business insurance and stuff. I pay it all of that. That'll be my taxes and insurance. Some people just put, put taxes, but this money right here accumulates a lot. And if you follow my, my lead for uh, taking advantage of the tax, uh, tax, the tax benefits by registering your company as an LLC, then you're going to have little to no taxes. You have a lot more money left over. So I found out with my businesses, I can pay my taxes and my car insurance and everything that I need out of here. Uh, the next one, 
is going to be a 10 percent uh let me find my marker my eraser here we go next one is 10 percent that's going to be your profit and then the last one down here is going to be your home and these are the five five accounts that i actually tell you to go set up and once you uh once you leave a class boot camp you need to go set up go to your bank set up these five checking accounts uh, that's another thing two people are asking me should i set up checking accounts or should i set up uh savings accounts uh, I say set up checking accounts. And the reason I say that, if you're in the state of North Carolina, if you actually went there, you made uh, you made the you, you set up one checking account, made the rest of them savings account. Uh, if you owe child support, or they're gonna save your account, they'll pull all your money out of savings accounts. They 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 won't ask no questions or nothing. If they see money in a savings account, they'll come garnish all that money. They'll pull all that money. They'll levy your account if it's a savings account. If it's a checking account, they won't they won't take your money out. They uh, child support won't come take your money out no check, checking account because they can't force you to write bad checks. So that's why I say make them checking accounts and not savings accounts. You put them in savings account, and if you owe child support, alimony, or owe the state any money, they're gonna come garnish that money. Ain't gonna say you tell you nothing. You are gonna wake up one morning, all your money gonna be gone. But if you put them in checking accounts, uh, they can't uh, uh, they can't actually come in and garnish money out the checking account. Now the federal government, they'll still put a levy on you uh, if it's if it's a checking account, and they'll let checks and stuff clear. Um, but you wouldn't be able to get any money out, but your money is not gone. So now the money is there, and you can write checks on it. Uh, so your checks and stuff will still clear as you go there and you try to uh, set up a if you owe back taxes or something. As you set up a payment plan and stuff, once you get set up the payment plan, then they'll uh, take the levy off. You can get your money back. But state of North Carolina, they don't play. They'll come in. If you got a savings account, they'll pull every penny of it out, and you, and they, and you won't get none of it back. You can forget about it. If you try to call your baby mama and ask for it back, you forget about that, too. She's not going to send you no money back. But that's why I said make those uh, make those checking accounts. Okay. So people say, uh, one of the questions I got, people say, well, what money should the main deposit come in? My main deposit comes in here, comes into my operating account. So for instance, if I wake up tomorrow morning, I'm gonna watch my call. I'm gonna get a thousand dollar deposit come into my uh, come into my account. It's gonna come in here. It's gonna either come through uh, uh, Square. It might come through uh, one of one of the companies that one of the third party warranty companies. They make a deposit into my account. Uh, it might come from somebody who's actually uh, uh, anybody who's making me payments. Uh, it's gonna come right here into my operating account. So once it comes into my operating account. So now I wake up tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go look and see how many deposits I got. And I'm gonna add up the total. So if I got a total of a thousand dollars that came into my account, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna watch my call. I'm gonna take that thousand, I'm gonna multiply it times 25, and that's gonna give me $250. I'm gonna put $250 here. And I'm gonna do it all online. I'm gonna actually just uh, come here and just do a transfer online. Transfer two hundred fifty dollars from here over over to my owner's pay. And if you look at uh, if you look at my account, uh, if I was to pull up my banking online on my account, you actually see this as um, you can put counts uh, what they call nickname your account. And my accounts will actually say this. It'll say fifty percent operating, twenty five percent owner's pay, fifteen percent tax, ten percent profit. And when I go to the bank, and you also see one that say home. When I go to the bank, uh, the tellers and stuff that know me, they ask me uh, which one you want. You want the 25%, you want the 15%. They, they know which ones I go there. When I go to the bank, I'll uh, make withdrawals and stuff. Sometimes they, uh, the tellers will ask me which one I want, but they know I got these right here. They ask me which account I want. And uh, I have explained it to them, and, and they think it's pretty pretty neat too. All right, so once I do that, uh, uh, then I have another, uh, I'll take this again. And I'm gonna multiply times 15 percent. And I multiply times 15 percent. That's gonna give me 150 dollars. I'm gonna transfer here. Okay, that's my 15 percent. That's gonna pay my taxes. I'm gonna come here again, multiply that thousand times 10 percent, and that's gonna give me 100 dollars to go here. I'm just transferring on online. I'm just gonna transfer online. All right. When I get done. What's that going to leave me with after I make all my withdrawals? 
and you'll leave me with five hundred dollars. This five hundred dollars that I have here, this is the five hundred dollars that I need to actually buy gas for my uh, vehicles. This is uh, five hundred dollars that I need to actually pay my labor. The five hundred dollars here go to buy uh, buy parts and all that. This is my operating account. This is what I actually need to operate my business. This account right here, it never really grows big. It's just a, it's just it's, it's constantly going up and down. Sometimes this account right here get real close to zero um, uh, throughout the week because I constantly I'm constantly buying parts. I'm constantly putting in gas. I'm operating everything out of here. So this account right here, you look at it uh, throughout the week, it might be uh, close to zero dollars in there. And then sometimes, uh, kind of like uh, the guy who, who was on the wire, the, uh, I forget his name, but the actual guy who was the congressman, and he was talking about that when he walked out his uh, walk out his apartment at the beginning of the street, he got a pocket full of money. But when he get down, I think I'm paying everybody out. He's broke. That's the way I am. You catch me sometimes in the middle of the week. I look like I'm a millionaire in here, but by the time Friday come and I do payroll and everything, you would think I was actually starving to death. So this account right here, don't be afraid with this account going down low sometimes because it's always going to fluctuate. And like I say, sometimes it gets close to zero in this account. All right, this account right here is your owner's pay account. And what I tell people to do here who comes into my appliance boot camp, this owner's pay account is what you, uh, if you currently work in a job, what I tell you to do, is actually um, uh, see how much you make per month in your job. So, if, I mean, per week. Uh, or you go per month. It should be the same thing. Say, uh, we're going to put here, we're going to say per week so it's easier. All right, so if you make $1,000 per week at your uh, at your current job, and I tell you to do this before you uh, quit your job. You make $1,000 per week. All right, 1000 times um, uh, 4.3 now, uh, cause that's how many weeks are uh, in a month. If you divide out the 52 weeks by 12, you get 4.3. That's how many weeks in a month. So that'll give you uh, $4,300 per month that you that you bring home. And I, I, I ain't talking about I ain't talking about gross right here. This is not gross. This is gonna be net. This is gonna be net what you bring home. That's net. That's not gross. That's what you bring home per week in your check. So that give you this per month. Then I say multiply that times three. So you multiply that times three. That's gonna give you. All right. That's how that's that right there. That's your freedom score. That's the freedom amount you need to have. You want to say freedom. That's how much money you need to accumulate into this account right here before you quit your job. And what this does, it gives you three months of living expenses before you quit. So what happens every time you, you you keep bringing two fifty in here, every every time from your business you keep bringing two fifty, two fifty, and we're gonna let that uh we're gonna let that keep going and keep going and keep going until you get to the, get to that number. Once you reach that number right here, now you can actually start to actually every week you can actually take a thousand dollars off and actually start paying yourself. Like you were getting paid at your uh pay, like you were getting paid at your actual company. So now you have replaced your actual company uh paycheck with your business paycheck. So now you you're able to actually start paying yourself just like your company was paying you. And when you do that, now you have at least three months buffer. Now you're gonna have times when times are slowing down, it won't affect you getting paid. Your family now gonna be happy, especially if you're married. Your wife or your spouse gonna be happy. Because now you got consistency. You always gonna be getting paid that same amount of money that you were making at your uh, at your job. And there's no there's not none of these times where you get paid this week and next week you don't get paid. Now you're gonna be able to give yourself a steady paycheck going forward. So that's why I say wait and uh, wait until you get this amount in before you quit your job. Because now because uh, we every business has cycles, every business goes through cycles. When we get through our slow cycle. Then uh and and, and and you if you don't have this money backed up and you don't have three to three months to get you back into where uh cycles changes and get picked back up, um you might not be able to pay yourself. And then your spouse, uh even you will be saying, Hey, I shouldn't have quit my job. I can't afford it. I'm not getting paid anymore. So that's why I say let that money build up before you uh quit your job. Then you can actually start paying yourself the same salary that you was making at your job. But that's what this owner's paid for. This is how I actually pay myself right here. All right, 
This right here, the 150 uh, for taxes and insurance, that money is going to stack up. And this is the money that you're going to save up throughout the whole year. And at the end of the year, you're going to pay your accountant out of this. I pay my uh, CPA. Uh, I pay, uh, if I owe any taxes, I, 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 pay the, I pay taxes out of that. And then I pay my insurance for my cars and stuff like that. Like I said, uh, I have... I have a bunch of vehicles here and I have people driving them for the different businesses I got and stuff. Not only that, I got two team drivers. Uh, so my insurance is, uh, can get to be pretty high and I just pay it out of here instead of paying it out of uh, the operating. And I could, if I put it on the operating, uh, it probably could do it, but it, uh, sometimes the insurance uh, uh, can, can be almost $3,000 that we have to pay. And if I was to pull that out at certain times, it would actually start to uh, drain this to put too much of a drain on the operator. But because I have it over here and I have a huge amount stacked up throughout the whole year, and I know that I'm going to take advantage of all the tax breaks that come with owning the uh, LLC, um, that I'm not going to pay little or no taxes, I can actually pull it out of here and it's, it's not going to affect the tax. As a matter of fact, I have money left over in there, even after paying all my insurance and stuff. All right. So over here uh, with this profit, like I say, every uh, every every time you get paid, it's gonna be adding hundred dollars or whatever, and it's gonna keep building up. Um, so if this builds up. We're gonna say for a whole quarter. I'm gonna let this go for a whole quarter. Um, at the end of a quarter, just say for instance, if I got ten thousand dollars in here at the end of uh, at the end of a quarter, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna what's my call? I'm gonna uh, take that ten thousand, and I'm gonna take half of it out. That leave me with five thousand dollars. So what's going to happen with that five thousand dollars? I'm going to give that uh, for my wife and my kids and my and, and me to actually have some fun with. That's how you see me take vacations. That's how I, uh, like now I got a daughter who's what we call who's here at turn sixteen. Uh, she's expecting she's going to get a car. I don't know yet, so uh, I don't know if she's going to get one. We have to see. But she wants to. Uh, she she's uh, she's expecting a car. Her mom's expecting her to have a car. So that's what I use that money for. So at the end of every quarter, I take whatever money I have saved up into this, and I take half of it out, and I go do something uh, with my family, kind of to celebrate and stuff like that. So they like that. And we'll do something for, with that. We'll buy some furniture with the house. We'll do something with the yard. Uh, we'll do something with that. Buy, they can buy clothes and all that. Whatever they want, they can do do that with that, that money there. Uh, now, what happens with that other part? So what happens here? Uh, I took five thousand out. I got five thousand left. So what happened? That five thousand I have left, I put it back into the profit account. Then I start putting my hundred dollars back in every week. So now this time at the end of the next quarter, I'm not going to have ten thousand. I'm going to have fifteen thousand left. So now if I got fifteen thousand. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take that 15 and I'm going to divide it by two. That gives me 7,500. So now uh, the vacations get better. So you, uh, you might see me now. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be going a little bit out the country. We're doing a little bit more because what happened, this stash is starting to build up and we can do more elaborate things. So now instead of me having 5,000 to spare, now I got 7,000. 7,500 to spare, and I could actually do more, uh, do something even better with my family and stuff. And, uh, and as the years go, you can do more. And by the time my grandkids and stuff get here, that money will be there. Well, I may take not only just me and my kids or my wife, I may take my grandkids and do whatever. And you know, I might be able to even uh, pay for one of my grandkids' tuition or something uh, out of that by the time they get here. But that's what I keep doing. So the next time, instead of me having 5,000 to start off with, I have 7500 and I start, like I said, keep putting my $100 in per week or whatever that amount is. And then and next time, you know, you have that you have that amount of money to, uh, to start with. You know, and just keep growing and growing. So that way uh, you're always doing something bigger and better. And believe it or not, my family actually look for that. Uh, they, they, they know at the end of the quarter, they know stuff is coming up. So uh, a lot of times, uh, they have that money spent before the quarter's up. They know what they're going to do next quarter coming up. They already got it spent on something they want to do. And that's how you actually do that. And that's how I'm able to come down here 
uh, late at night like I am now and actually work on my businesses and stuff and don't get too much slack. Now, I ain't going to say you're not going to get any slack. You're still going to get some slack, but they're not going to get as much slack as you would uh, if I wasn't, they didn't have a reward waiting at the end for me actually doing that. And this right here, your home account, uh, this is where you write all your bills and stuff on them that come from your home. So uh, if you're paying yourself, you know, every week a thousand dollars or whatnot, and, uh, uh, you just hear, and that right there is where you write your bills for your, you write your mortgage out of here, you write your, uh, you know, your groceries, anything dealing with our household comes out of this account right here. This account, right? Excuse me, this account right here uh, is mainly uh, just my, really just my wife account. That's what she used to actually uh, run the household on uh, this account right here, this home account. Uh, I personally don't have, I don't even, I just put the money in it. I don't even have a, a, a debit card for that account. And the reason I don't have a debit card for that account, when I first, uh, when we first got married, uh, I didn't know anything about finances and didn't know how to handle money like a lot of people do. And I remember we had just got married, just had our son. Uh, we were, I was working and she was working. I thought I was still like single. And I was going out to eat, pulling money out of this account right here. And if we didn't have any money for gas and stuff <laughs> at one point in time. So at that point in time, I said, hey, you take the card. Or more likely, she said, give me the card. So I gave her the bank card. And she would just give me like, a, excuse me, like $30, $40 a week so I could actually eat. But that's where that came from. And ever since then, I've never had a, a, a debit card for that account anymore. Um, and I don't, I, really, I don't care. Uh, that's, that's just to pay the household bills and stuff out of. So I, I, don't, I don't, I really, I don't even care about it. So she, this, is, this is really her account that she pay all the bills and stuff off of. And all I do is just put money into that account. So that's what that home account is for. And that's how we actually run our household um, right here. This is exactly how I run my household. This is how I do my businesses. And now, if I, uh, if right here in my owner's pay, right here, like I said, this is my number, uh, three to uh, three, uh, three months of living expenses. Some people like to have six. Uh, here, I tell people at least three. Uh, as you get better in business, like with me, I'm okay. Uh, I'm okay if I just have maybe right now. Sometimes I have maybe two months, maybe two. I, I, I think it is right about three. Maybe it might be three. But I, I'm okay with one or two months in here. Because I've done it so long, and I know my I know my business cycles, and I I know how much money my money is coming in and stuff. Then once it gets above this twelve thousand nine hundred, or it gets above the amount that you come comfortable with. So suppose um, it gets up to this builds up to um, let's say uh, twenty twenty five thousand. All right, uh, what I do, I come here and I'll take the top of it off. Um, so I would come in and I would actually take zero, zero, one, uh, three, that'd be two, one. I would what you call. I'll actually come in here and I'll, I'll take that much money out of it. I'll take the 12,100, um, out of there, that, um, uh, cash out of there. And I'll take that and I'll go do something, um, uh, buy a house or just say I buy a house. So if I go buy a house for that uh, twelve thousand, and what happened that house then, uh, and I get it, I get it rehab and get it where it starts to rent. So that house start paying, uh, starts paying me what you call seven hundred dollars a month. I'm gonna erase some of this. I'm pretty sure everybody got this so far. So I'm gonna what you call. I'm gonna uh, erase a little bit of this so I can have a little bit more room. Um, I'm gonna erase this right here. All right. So if I go buy a house for twelve thousand, and say with that um, house uh, for twelve thousand one hundred, I go buy that. So I'm gonna invest that into a house. I will start another LLC, which I have. So this LLC here would be uh, Snee R I H. This is one of my LLC. So with that, um, I'll actually here what I would do. I will make another account. So here on my account here, you uh, I have another uh, fifty percent operating. So I have SME R I H fifty uh, percent operating. So what happened? Uh, if somebody paid their rent here, 
they're going to they're going to work because they're going to pay me seven hundred dollars so if they pay me seven hundred dollars rent what i'm going to do i'm going to do the exact same formula um i'm, I'm going to come here and i'm going to multiply this times uh 0. 0.25 and i'm going to take that and put it into my owner's pay i'm going to come here again and i'm going to multiply that times 0. 0.15 i'm going to put that into the tax and i'm going to come here and i'm going to multiply that times 10 and I can put that into the profit. So any other businesses I have, I just add another operating account, and then I just multiply the same and, and dump them back into these into these pockets right here. So I have Smeed RAs like now. I got the appliance boot camp. All of this right here gets done, and it actually just keep feeding in and I keep breaking down. So what happens now? I get uh, I get bigger uh, owners pay, and it also going to increase my profit where I can actually do more with my family and stuff. So not go out and start building other businesses and stuff. Uh, it actually uh, it makes the profit better and makes a better vacation and also gives me on bigger ownership. Um, I'm at the point now where uh, I've been talking to my wife. I, I would like to get me, uh, I haven't had any toys in a long time, but I think I would like to pull something off of the <laughs> top and buy me a toy uh, next year. But uh, we still haven't quite decided. She wanted to get my daughter out of high school. She said, once my daughter graduates from high school, then I can buy me a nice toy. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull something off the top next time. I'm going to go out and buy me a toy uh, for something. Um, uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to buy me a toy, something that uh, something I can have some fun with. But uh, yeah, that's all I do. Is I add more businesses, I just add another account, uh, operating account, and I let it go. Now another thing too with the 15% tax. Uh, what I do here, uh, this one right here at the end of every week. Uh, I keep this at a bank that I um I don't have any debit card with. I don't have any checks with. Uh, I have to actually go to the bank and get it. Um, the reason why I do that, uh, because that money grows. If I start seeing all that money that's in that account on a daily basis, uh, Mike Sneed thinks he's smarter than what he is, and I think I can actually take that money and flip it or do something with it before it's time for taxes to come. But I don't. Uh, I want to be careful not to pull no money off of it. So what I do, um, you can actually link different banks to your um, to your actual main bank. So I have this account right here linked to another bank um, that actually uh, I have to actually get in my car and drive downtown Raleigh, about 15 miles from where I live, and um, I have to go through traffic and all that to go there and pull that money out. So that's not something I want to be going to do every day. So that actually keeps me from being tempted to pull that money out to try to do something crazy. Because what happened, if, if I think a good deal come through and I see all that money that's stacked up in there, I'm going to go there and try to do something with it. And um, I got to make sure that I got money to pay my car insurance and pay my taxes and to pay my CPA uh, when, when it's time for her to do, uh, do all my taxes. Matter of fact, uh, the, the, right now, taxes are, uh, uh, taxes are due in, the, in a couple of months on 915. So I got to go there now and get the money to pay my CPA. So she'll tell me how much I owe. Because uh, she's emailed me a couple of times this week, and I'm gonna pay her um, by the 15th and, and be done with that. So, but that's how I do my actual uh, the five banking account. And like I said, this is not anything that I created. I don't think nobody, somebody created it a long time ago. But if you talk to anybody who's run a successful businesses, they have percentages and they have ways that they allocate their funds. And that's all it is, just allocating your funds, telling your money where to go, so you actually have a plan and you actually can actually then. Uh, keep up with where your money is at. Because if you don't tell your money where to go, your money will find somewhere to go, and you won't know where it went. And I told people how to do this. Not only does it work with uh, with my business as a client repair business, it worked in my real estate business. It worked with this uh, appliance boot camp school. It worked at the store that I had. Um, like I said, I, I've given this to various people. I gave it to somebody who uh, what's called runs a uh, trucking company. And it worked just fine for them. They they, they they give me praises all the time and thank me for giving them that formula. Uh, it works everywhere. Like I said, for 15 employees or less, this works well. You get above 15 employees, you, you might want to look at something a little bit different. That, that's, that's, that's territory I haven't been into where I had a business to operate for more than 15 employees. You get more than 15 employees, uh, you're going to have to probably look for something a little different. I know it worked for 15 or less. I never stressed it out on 15 or more employees. Uh, so that's that's what I use, and uh, it works well. And I want to say too, uh, I don't know if the young lady's watching. She might be watching, but I, I had a young lady 
earlier this week who was asking me about uh about financial stuff and i was trying to i was trying to explain to her how, how she how how i do my finances and stuff and how i'm okay why the economies and stuff don't bother me and i've never uh, she asked me uh for uh my formula then i asked her i said well what what uh <laughs> what what financial uh formula you use and she told me the holy spirit i, I was like what she said the Holy Ghost tell her how to handle her finances, and and I, I it kind of not. I, I'm not saying I'm against religion because I'm not. Uh, you gotta have religion, but I think sometimes that's what happens, especially as us as African Americans. Uh, we somebody teach tell us that stuff because she was making some bad decisions and she was trying to throw it off on that the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit had led her. to to do the things that she was about to do. And I was trying to tell her she was messing up. But uh, uh, that right there, I know work. Maybe somebody in the chat or somebody else who, who followed the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, uh, let me know. Because I've asked a couple of people, and I've, 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 you'd be surprised how many people tell me, yeah, they go by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost tells them how to do their finances. Um, and the African-American community. I, I, don't, I don't know. Outside of that, I might ask my Indian friends and my old business partners, do they uh do they use uh the Holy Spirit or their religious religion spirit to actually tell them how to do finances or something? But I was surprised. I started asking people uh, uh, how many people actually told me, yeah, they they go by their gut feeling and go by the Holy Ghost uh, with doing their finances, and they weren't interested in, in what I was trying to teach. So uh, I was just throwing that little bit in, and that's not to knock the religion or anything. But I, I was just surprised when she told me that earlier today. All right. All right, here we go. Bro, when is the next class of 2020? Uh, we're going to have that coming out pretty soon. That's Space Age, Space Age 3000. Uh, JT, I think, will be up maybe this Friday, uh, next Friday, he'll be coming up. And we're going to sit down and we're going to actually start planning out the actual boot camps for next year. Uh, I should have the actual website up in a couple of weeks. And so if you go to the website, you'll be able to see all of that. And we should have then enough space to accommodate everybody who wants to come. Bianca Griffin, hello, Ohio in the house. Hey, how you doing? Andre Pierre, I'm trying to get into the next class. Okay, yeah, just be on the lookout. We're gonna uh, we're gonna have it up when the next class is coming. It's gonna be in January, uh, be in January. We already booked for this year, but we'll have a song coming up in January. It'll be the next time we have open enrollment. Uh, Rasheem Abdul Shalom, aloha, Mr. Snee. Hey, how you doing? Urban Thomas, is this for a business account? Yeah, do this for a business account. Um, you can, uh, this is for actually running a business, Mr. Thomas. This is how I actually structure my accounts for my businesses. Oh, have I missed a lot going to watch the replay? Okay, watch the replay. Yeah, it's not that much. Yeah, I, um, I do all of it at one bank, but like I say, the 15% where, I keep, where it keeps stacking throughout the year for the taxes and insurance, I actually transfer that over to another bank where I actually can't see the, uh, see, see the account. Uh, balance it uh, every day. Cause like I say, I see that account balance every day, and it, that tax that tax account it's gonna grow. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be big, and you're gonna look at it and you're gonna think you can do something with it. Or if you uh, if you were to hit a hot uh, a hard spot in life, you might reach over there and try to grab it. And that's one person you don't want to mess with. You don't want to mess with the federal government if you don't tax. Them. You want to pay them quick and get them out your hair because they can make major trouble for you. All right, Virgil, Virgil Johnson, this lesson is a blessing. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad it is helping somebody. Greens, Barossi Cash, Greens Mike, where does the money as far as payments from cash, check, or credit cards go into which account for services rendered after you have completed the work from your customers and then pay? That goes into the uh, operating 50%. So all my uh, credit card payments, they come in here. All of my uh, cash payments, uh, they go in there like... Uh, the, the subcontractors that work with me, I give them what they call deposit cards, and they can actually go to any ATM uh, with that bank, and they can put in cash, and they can just put for deposit only on the back of the check, and they can deposit right into the account, and they're coming in right here at this account. When it comes to the discount, uh, the accounts usually come, uh, the, the deposits usually come in about 5:30 in the morning. So if you wake up about 5:30 in the morning, which I do to look to actually look at the deposits. So you wake up at 5.30 in the morning, you see your deposit come in, you just then total all the deposits you have, and you just uh, start multiplying by the percentages. So 
Yeah, I think the debits they might they might do the debits. I'm thinking four thirty and do the deposits at five thirty. Try to make you have a a minus so they can hit you with a a, a, a bounce check. But uh, yeah, your deposits will be in uh, by five thirty morning. Hey, Mike, keep coming with the great info. We appreciate you. Uh, you welcome, Juan. Thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, good question, Veracity Cash. Yes, keep coming with the knowledge. They truly appreciate it. Okay, fine. No problem. And like I say, if you want to go deeper into this, it's a book called, um, I'll write it in green so they know it's real different. It's a book called Profit First. If you get that book, it'll go in more detail of, of how that works. Uh, a lot of people actually, uh, a lot of people teach it to file banking accounts. Uh, it's another guy. And then uh, Glenn and Cameron, he, he teaches five banking accounts. I don't know how he break his out by hearing him say five banking accounts. Uh, I would need to go look through all his, uh, look through his, what we call it, look through his videos and actually find out how he break them out. I listened to his podcast. I, I never paid attention how he break his out. But he had, he, he, he said, most people will tell you five banking accounts. Uh, most people are, are. I don't know how he break his down, but uh, most of the time people have a way to allocate their cash. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I think I just uh, answered that porosity cash. Okay. Uh, Raheem Adu Shalom. What kind of toy? Hmm. Motorized bike, kind of toy, uh, drone. <laughs> nah, I'll be honest. I like that new Corvette that's coming out. Uh, I'm really, really liking that new Corvette. It's, it's, uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm liking it. Really liking it. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Tone Brad, uh, I got, I, I got to catch the replay. Good looking out. I've been waiting for this. Okay, no problem. Irvin Thomas, so how about if I'm starting a business, but I still have a job and want to allocate my job money to my uh, daily lifestyle and my business? Okay, let me read that again. So how about if I'm starting a business, but I still have a job and want to allocate my job money to my daily lifestyle and my business? I wouldn't suggest doing that. Uh, that's what we call uh, co-mingling funds. I would separate your job money from your actual business money. Your job money needs to go here into your home account and actually operate everything from your job money from your home account. Now, if you want to, uh, you want to do what we call owners uh, get some owners equity, where you actually uh, invest money into your business, you can do that. But if you do invest money into your business, you need to uh, put it here into a totally separate account and break it down through here. Uh, you don't want to uh, start co-mingling funds. You want to keep both of those separate. And, and reason, another reason why I tell you to do that, keep them separate, and because why I say keep the different businesses separate, because if you brought all your money from your uh, job and your business in together, sometimes the business might not be strong enough to support itself, and you wouldn't be able to tell it because of your uh, your current job income will be, uh, be actually giving it a crutch and making it go on. This way right here, it actually shows you if you doing if you are if you are charging the correct prices, if you're getting your money uh, fast enough, you got fast enough turnaround on your receivables, um, and that your uh, actual cash flow is good by doing it this way. If you start putting other money into this operating account, you can actually uh, actually start to hide some problems that this company has. That's why when I said I bring a new company in, I have its own operating account because I don't want to I don't want uh, I don't want this company. To actually start uh, uh, supporting a, uh, another company and hiding the problems that the other company might have. So that's why uh, I try. I separate everything. I separate everything. I want everything to be supported. So, yeah, Verizon Cash. Your job money should be seed money. It gives you some owner's equity. You can invest it in your business, but don't don't co mingle them. Um, where can you get the info on the tax break for the LLC? And when would the appliance group count be online? V and when will the applied boot camp be an online resource? The online resource, what I do um, in the description after this uh, video is over, I put in the description a link to it. You, uh, applied boot camp is already online. Um, the actual information for the tax breaks for LLC is a book called 405 uh, Tax Deduction for Self Employed Business Owners, something like that. Uh, like I said, I, I bought three books. <laughs> And they're gone again already. I haven't sent my friend in Atlanta, Georgia. He is. Uh, I bought a book, and I, I say I'm going to bring one to class. I'm going to bring one to show on the live feed. 
But what happens as soon as I buy the book, I'm always talking to somebody and I always give them the book. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just buy a stack of them and actually just keep them on hand and just uh, and maybe I start even selling them. <laughs> just selling them to people. I, I should probably buy a box of them, see if I can buy a bulk of them and just keep them here. But that way I always have one on hand. But that's another thing too you're going to find out once you get into business and, and you uh, uh, and you, you, you start uh, if you start mentoring or helping other people you will have some books that you'll go to books. Um, you won't never, you won't never have it. Everybody else will have it. You, you tell somebody else uh, about it, and then you'll be like, oh, "Just take mine. I go get another one." And so that's what happens to me all the time. All the books and stuff I tell y'all about, I buy them, and, and within the uh, before the week is out, I see somebody, and I be done told them about it, and they'll be like, "You, they just ask me, what's the name of that book?" Oh, I got one in the car. Uh, I, I give you that, and I go grab it. Me another. One. So that's what happened. So I, I'm gonna buy me just a bulk of them and keep them here. All right. Uh, Louis uh, Cabello. Sorry, I'm late. Hello from Oakland, California. Hey, how you doing? Are you packed yet? <laughs> Hello, Mike from Ann and LBC. Hey, how you doing, Ann? All right. Uh, I catch the replay as well. All right. Thanks. Thanks. All right. No problem, Veracity Cash. Oh yeah. Uh, 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 black pressures. Uh, yeah, Glendon is Glendon is really good. Glendon, yeah, he go hard. He's really good. Uh, he he get really good information. Uh, double AJWS. Uh, what will be the cost of boot camp next year? Uh, we don't have that cost yet. Like I say, uh, I'm actually uh, this right here is a temporary building. <laughs> this is uh, this will be the third building we going into in less than a year. So what's gonna happen? The next boot camp we go into, uh, hopefully that's going to be one going to be a little bit more permanent. I'm actually looking for a commercial building where I can actually put it in and that'd be uh, big enough to house uh, where I see the vision of this appliance boot camp going to. And once I get the building and I actually uh, get the prices on how much it's going to actually cost to get everything set up and renovated um, and actually the carrying costs going forward on it, then I'll come back and I actually, uh, what you call it? Uh, make the price for the uh, the new appliance boot camp. But right now, until I find that building and can get the numbers, uh, I don't I don't have a price to give you. But like I say, the price that we give you, um, not only are we gonna um, we're not gonna it's gonna be still very very affordable. Um, it's gonna probably it's gonna still be cheaper than what anybody else is offering. But we're gonna also add more value into it too. It's not gonna be us uh, just going there and actually charging you more money and you not get more value. We're actually gonna add more value in there. Because um, when we go forward, um, right now we have to everybody have to share their appliances in here. Going forward, uh, er, uh, we're gonna have a, a station uh, where I, I want to have a station where we can group two people together. So if somebody come here and their skill sets uh, with hand tools and stuff is a little, it's not up to par with somebody who has a lot of skills with the hand tools and stuff. I compare those two together and let the person who's been working with hand tools and have and, and very knowledgeable about them have him actually work with somebody who doesn't know anything much about hand tools and they're going to have their own station where they're going to have all their appliances and that way everybody will be forced to actually take everything apart and everybody then will be forced to put everything together and everybody then will get uh, a lot more hands-on and it'll be uh it'll be more conducive where uh now if somebody we, if we get three or four people in here who uh never worked with hand tools it can actually start to bog the class down a little bit so going forward we need to address that where those people who never even work with hand tools will be able to come in here and actually uh, uh, get uh, get what they need and not have to worry about bothering the class now. Yeah, he do Kung Fu Hustler. Yeah, he, he, he's good. Yeah, the uh, new Corvette is nice. It is nice. It is nice. I've been trying to stay away from going to look at one, uh, going to the dealership asking about it. Uh, sling slot motorcycle. I don't quite like that. I have a little um, Harley Davidson bobber that I actually chopped up and built, and I, I ride that. I like I like the motorcycle. I don't like the sling shot that much. Uh, might give them the name of the book of 495 ways tactics. No, there you go. Uh, there you go. Veracity Cash just put in there. Uh, for uh, 495 ways tax deduction for small businesses. There you go. Hello from Oakland, California. Also been waiting for this one. Thank you very much. I'll be watching this in full right after. Okay, no problem. All right, yeah, you catch it on replay. All right. What's up, Mike? Great info. I work for 
one of the major appliance manufacturers, but I think. Okay, there you go. Uh, do you speak on holding companies? Uh, no, I don't speak on holding companies. Uh, not 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 with the appliance boot camp and stuff. The appliance boot camp is, is going to be very very the, the very bare bones that you need to get going with. Uh, holding companies, we do that with my um, uh, we do that with my what you call uh, with my investment group. We do holding companies there, but uh, uh, with the applies boot camp, no, we don't do holding companies here. Uh, applies boot camp is just just this right here, very simple. If you start getting into holding companies and and and, and stuff like that, that's a little bit more advanced than what I'm gonna be teaching at applies boot camp. But like I say, we do have holding companies in our investment group. Uh, I can make, yeah, you can make, you, yeah, you, you definitely make three to four times more if you went on your own, um, uh, uh, repairing the plans. I think you should out your book list. Yeah, I, 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 I thought about that, uh, making a, a book list and, and putting books on there for my, uh, I, I never done it. And I, a lot of them, believe it or not, if you talk to most entrepreneurs, uh, they're probably top five books. It's going to be pretty common across everybody. So if you if you if you get one from any successful entrepreneur, a book list, those first five or six books, it's going to be common across everybody. You know, so uh, it's not going to be anything much different if you go uh, from anybody. You're going to be, going to be pretty much the, the first five or six books going to be common. You'd be surprised too as uh, you start to do more entrepreneurship and you start to read more. You'd be surprised that. Um, how many people actually read the exact same books? And then when you start to see and listen to motivational speakers, business gurus, and all that, you know, start to realize, man, they're just repeating what came out of this book. You know, so you start to realize, you know, it's not, it's not something that uh, there's, there's somebody is so so bright, smarter than anybody else. It's just, uh, it's just common knowledge across everybody. Everybody, it, it, this this business thing is not, it's not something. There's no rocket science. Uh, this business thing is, is pretty much uh, is pretty much if you follow these principles, it will work in any business, any business discipline. So once you get it down pack and apply to boot camp, you can actually apply this to uh, to any business that you run. Uh, the same principles can be pretty much the same. The basic uh, basic principles can be the same. Now it will be some nuances for different uh, um, different areas you operate in that you will need to talk to somebody who actually operate in that area to find out. But the uh, the basic the basic foundation is going to be the same. Okay. Uh, Sanchez author, this man say said save as much money or uh, for you to quit your job to set up the five bank account. I'm getting started as we speak. Yeah. Uh, well, you you're not really uh, you're not really saving. What's happened? You're letting you you actually qualifying your business. Uh, what happened if you wasn't come here and uh, see when you by the time you, you this right here doesn't take long in the appliance in the appliance business. Like I say uh, here, uh, guys leaving here, they're making uh, working part time. They make a five hundred to a thousand dollars per week. Uh, they doing the way I tell them to do it. What this does, it gives you time to actually prove the concept and, and prove to yourself that this is something you want to do. You just not you're not operating off emotion. By the time you get down here and build this up. This won't take you no more than about maybe three months to do, three to four months to do, if that long. Um, but it gives you a chance to actually prove the concept. If you actually marry and you have a spouse that's dependent upon you, it gives them a chance to actually also uh, get buy-in and see that it actually operates. Uh, it operates. And the other thing it does, it actually allows you to actually get a business, um, get the business some legs up on it. You don't want to have to work your car, start a business, you ain't got no money to pay yourself. You're gonna put too much pressure on that new business. You asking that new business right here to actually tote the whole weight uh, uh, of everything, and they can't do it. You gotta get that business time uh, to uh, get his legs up so it can actually start to run. So this right here actually does a lot. And that, like I say, the main thing is let you know if this is something you want to do. Because when we first start off in business, everybody wants to do it. But when you get all that what I call the honeymoon stage, where you actually in the daily daily grind of it. And you out here actually doing the server calls every day, and you actually out here uh, building up money up. Then you decide if you want to do it or not. And this is the time where you actually is a proven ground. Uh, the other thing too, uh, 
Uh, I don't know uh, when I talk about the profit over here. Uh, and this is another thing too. Like I said, uh, one time I was really bad with money. And I messed money up a lot. And whenever I got ready to go into my uh, business, my wife was scared because of electrical costs. Because I had, I, like I said, I had messed money up. I wasn't good with money. So she didn't think I would be able to operate the business and keep money coming in. So uh, if, you, if you knew somebody new and and you, you, you might run from business to business all the time thinking you got this new, because as entrepreneurs, we always think we got a new business that's going to work. And we always want people to buy into our dream. Um, and people say, always say, well, don't nobody support my dream. They don't support me. Uh, that profit will actually uh, make your spouse, uh, if, you, if you're married. If you're single, who cares? It don't matter then. But if you're married, you actually got to uh, get some buy-in from your spouse and you want her to support your dream. Uh, what I've done for a long time with that profit, uh, if I if I if I made say if I, I went out and I made a thousand dollars that day, I'll bring that hundred dollars home and I'll actually set it uh, somewhere where my wife could see it. It'd be like on a little dresser or uh, it'd be right by the bed. I'll actually set it there every day so she could see it and she could see I was bringing money home. I let it stack there all the way to the uh, to the end of the week. And at the end of the week, what I went and done, I went and got this little safe one time and um, I would actually then just take it and store it. And what she would do, she said, I don't do it now. So don't nobody talk about they come into my house and do this and that. Because I, I, I don't do it now. This was 20 years ago. If you copied 20 years ago, yeah, you would have done it. But now you don't do it now. Um, whatever money I got now, I, I'm putting it into something until, uh, to make some more money. But uh, what I would do, I would stack it into a little safe that I had. And, uh, and that way she could actually see the money there. And it gave her comfort. Uh, if she knew every morning she could actually wake up and put her hand on that money and she could see it stack up. And then it got to the point where I would uh, I would tell her, you know, hey, uh, put that, uh, if you don't mind, put that money in the safe. So when she could take the money, put it in the safe, and she'll see we had a nice stash in there, she had comfort then. She, she, uh, uh, women love stability. Women, women love stability and they want to be able to know that you can actually pay the bills and that you're good. So once you see that you're stable and you got money saved up, y'all, you, you uh, and you, you you're good, then you actually have buy-in to your dream. Okay. When we pay, uh, this is Rodney Salon. When we pay for the boot camp, can the tools be sent out via email to us? Uh, what I normally do then, I do that uh, after what you call after the class, because if I send you the tool list. And if a tool on there that you haven't seen, that generates me 20 to 30 emails every day with somebody asking me, uh, what tool is this? What tool is that? Uh, uh, can you show me, say, can you send me a link where I can go buy? So some of the stuff I like to hold off to actual, to actual class so you can actually see it, you have a better understanding. It eliminates the email in the back and forth. Um, DJAJWS. Will you extend the boot camp to a three-day weekend opposed to just a two-day? I try not to. Uh, that's one of the things that I'm trying to uh, do. I want this to be for somebody who can, uh, for that guy who can't afford to take off vacation. I want uh, to come here. I want somebody to come here on the weekend, uh, not have to take away from their job and stuff. Actually, what we call get the training that they need, go back Monday morning, uh, go to work, and actually start their business and, and move on. It's mainly for that guy who's actually at that job and can't take off. If I start making it so it goes three days, four days, and five days, it gets to the point where I start to actually have to compete uh, against some of the more established uh, applied schools. Uh, with that, when I start doing that, it actually takes away the allure of getting somebody in and out over a weekend and actually getting them uh, up and running. So I want to make it so, make it so that y'all don't have to take no time off of work. I want y'all to come here, get what you need over the weekend, and then you go back to work Monday morning and uh, you have a plan and you have your own business that you're starting to build. Uh, so I want to keep it that way. Um, I will have some stuff like um, when we start breaking in sales systems, when we get to the next building and stuff, that would that would be a totally different thing. Some of the higher end stuff, uh, they would actually be for, uh, that actually be uh, a totally separate weekend. So some stuff we're going to go into, they're going to be more uh, for more experienced people. Um, I'm going to suggest that you actually been working in the appliance field or you have uh, you, you actually been working at least six months to a year before you come back. It won't be for a beginner. Uh, so with that stuff, it'll be another weekend you'll come in and we'll do more. Uh, we'll go into like the seal system, stuff like that. 
and we, we'll go more into the, the actual uh, day-to-day functions of the business. All right, correct. I'm going to be in the October boot camp class. Should I uh, advertise on my local Craigslist for business purposes for plot pressure? I, I say no, Barassi Cash. Um, I don't want you going out actually doing cash calls, COD calls uh, right now. Uh, I want you to actually go to the third party warranty company. And the reason why I want you to do that, the third party warranty companies, they're going to give you enough volume, but it also is a protector for you and it protects the customer. Because um, up until you get your skills set up, uh, I don't want you to go out there and misdiagnose something. Then you have to go back to the customer and tell them you misdiagnose something. So some of these control boards can be two, three hundred dollars. And if you misdiagnose one and you got to go tell the customer, hey, uh, I, I told you the wrong board. We need this board. And they got to pay another two hundred dollars and they'll pay you two hundred. They're not going to be happy. And you're not going to be happy if you have to come out of your pocket. So what happened with the third party warranty company? If you misdiagnose something, you just call the warranty company up and say, hey, uh, I need this part. They just send you the part. It don't cost you anything, and it don't cost the customer anything. You know, the customer only paid one deductible. Um, that's it. And that takes care of everything. And also what the third-party warranty company does, it doesn't uh, – because you don't have to pay for advertising and, and stuff like that, they're going to actually send you the calls, and they're going to give you enough volume of work where you're going to do have enough variety of stuff where you get to see a, 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 a whole variety of different appliances um, and uh, it also, like I said, it's going to uh, not have to worry about advertising. You can concentrate more on your skill set as a technician. Uh, so once you get that down pat and you, ha- you have the skill set of uh, the technician, then you need to actually then start branching out and actually doing COD work. And when you start doing that, I'm going to suggest that you come to the actual, uh, what we call an ASCII, uh, uh annual training program that we have for appliance service companies. Uh, this year is going to be in Tampa, Tampa, Florida. Uh, I'm going to advise you come down there and actually join into that uh, our organization and actually then come in and actually start then uh, uh, learning how to do business through them. Because uh, there you have a uh, you get put in peer groups and you can actually learn the like, proper way to do business. But up until then, you actually just uh, you actually just uh, on the job training. So I don't want you out there actually uh, uh, going to the public yet. Uh, also, can we have access to? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, those are totally two separate things: the appliance boot camp and uh, and the appliance boot camp online. Right now, they're totally two separate things. Maybe in the future we could work something out. But right now, they're totally two separate. What books do you like about Brandon? Um, you can you can uh, what is it, Seth Goldman? You can read any of his books. They're good. Um, let's see. Uh, God knows. As uh, far as Brandon, 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 Brandon. Uh, Seth Goldwyn, he's he probably about the best I know about Brandon, if you read his books. In an eight to 10 hour day, is it possible to do, to get five warranty service calls per day, 25 a week? Um, also, is $80 a call about right? Uh, eight to ten uh, in, a, uh, in a eight to ten hour workday. Yeah, uh, a good technician. Uh, he should do anywhere between seven to eight service calls per day. Uh, yeah, the warranty company they give you they give you as many as you as you would take. Uh, uh, right now, we're booked out all of we booked up this week and we booked up all of next week. We're we're actually scheduled for September the second, um, and that's what. Uh, or several technicians running um, five or six stops a day. Uh, I don't do weekends. I don't do weekends. But yeah, we, uh, you can you do as many calls as you want. Can you do a video on holding companies and how to set them up? Reason being, I'm interested in realty, uh, realty investments, and I heard holding companies help to save on taxes per se. Yeah, they have the advantages. Uh, no, I wouldn't be doing that on appliance boot camp. But uh, appliance boot camp, I want to keep that with appliance boot camp. Uh, that right there, like I say, I do that with an investment company we have. And our investment group, uh, we have holding companies. It wouldn't apply to appliance boot camp. And I don't want to actually start mixing mixing stuff in and start pulling people in who's looking for investments uh, Who, when I'm actually trying to get people to come to appliance boot camp. Now, with the uh, now, once you get your appliance uh, business up and running, uh, then yeah, you need to start looking for different avenues to actually 
uh, put your money to actually create passive income. So I'm going to actually start showing you more on how I put my uh, more of the side of uh, once you get your money from appliances, how you put your money to actually start um, uh, like my real estate and the other stuff that I do to create passive income. I'm going to start bringing that on this channel. But if I want to go into detail how to do uh, uh, holding companies and how we set things up in our investment group. No, we thought we but we have talked about it within our investment group of uh, maybe starting a channel. But we're actually uh, kind of like when JT came to our investment group that time, we actually have uh, talked about actually starting a channel where you can actually go there. We will we'll show y'all more of what we do and kind of let y'all see how we've done that thing with JT. Uh, open up our meetings and stuff more to you all that way. But no, nah, I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to cross pollinate the two. All right. Uh, Jermaine Fruitrail, what's up from down the street? My wife and I are going to work on these bank accounts. Got to manage money better. Yeah, it works. It works. It works. Uh, what are the top three warranty companies you signed up with from a business insurance standpoint? That's going to be up to you, uh, how you want your business to work. And I, I, I give people uh, different warranty companies to go try. And I tell you, find the one that best fits your purposes and what you want to do with your businesses. The ones that I like, uh, some people from the class came and told me they didn't like them. <laughs> they, they, they didn't like them, but some that they like, I told them I didn't like them. And so it was vice versa, depending on what you want to do and depend on your rep. Um, some, uh, you know, the rep that I have here in North Carolina can be totally different than the rep that they have maybe in Florida, Mississippi, or Detroit. So uh, depending on their rep, if they got, they find a rep that they really, they really like. Some of them have found reps that they really like, and and they working real close with the rep, and the rep is uh, working with them. They enjoying that company. Uh, so it, it, they're gonna, uh, I give you the ones, and you choose the ones that you want, and the ones that work best with your schedule and how you want to do your business. I was just talking to a guy. Uh, one of the guys came to apply his boot camp. He's up in, um, he's up in Washington D.C. Uh, he might be listening. He might be in the. Uh, uh, the live chat, but we were talking. Uh, one of them I gave, he didn't like, but he got another one that he's been talking to, and he's really excited about that. And he he going on with that company. That's another thing too. When you're a business owner, like we were talking, I don't know if you don't like them, fire them. You, know, you can you can tell, hey, I don't want to do no more work for you, and walk off, and you know, and, and go to the next company. And that's what he's doing. He said, hey, he don't like that company, but he liked this one, this other one he got. So he's gonna he's just gonna switch on over. Uh, so that, that's what he, he, that's what you can do when you got business on. When you're the business owner, if you don't like the you don't like the way they uh, you don't like the way they play their rules, you, you move. Uh, you are preaching. I have a special. Uh, I have a serial entrepreneur spirit in mind. Yeah, yeah, all of us do. Bianca Griffin. How does a wife encourage her husband to try this without offending him? Ah. Uh, that I don't know, Bianca. You maybe you can let him look at the videos, um, and maybe that will, that would get him encouraged. Uh, because I'm I'm the, I'm the exact opposite. I'm one um, I'm one where my wife had to have to govern me and slow me down. I'm not the one where she has to push. I'm the one where she uh, she's the actual other side that gives me the, the slowdown because I want to go full blast into everything. She's the one who actually put the brakes on. Uh, I would just say maybe. Uh, 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 let him look at the videos and maybe that can encourage him. Uh, get him around some entrepreneurs, some men who actually are doing some things in your community. Uh, a lot of times that would encourage him to go. Uh, but yeah, as far as encouraging a man to go, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe some, maybe some wives will go. And come in, maybe, some, maybe some wife or some lady in here in the chat would go. I try to get my wife to come on and stuff, but she won't come on and talk. Uh, she, she, uh, we're at the age, uh, like I say, I'm, I'm 46. Uh, we're at the age where we still don't trust social media much. So <laughs> my wife won't come on, and if she does come on, she's gonna probably tell you that she, uh, she, she put it all together that uh, I didn't know what I was doing, and uh, that she made me where I'm at right now. So that's that's gonna be her thing. Uh, that she gonna, he didn't know what he was doing, and he messed it up, and all that. So. Uh, I don't know how she's going to tell you uh, to actually encourage him because she always telling me I need to slow down. All right. Veracity Crab, Mike, I apologize for correction. The book is 47 Tax Deductions for Businesses and Self-Employed. Okay, yeah, there you go. That's the name of the book. All right, you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, Douglas Martin, hey, Mike, 
How are you doing? I can't wait to start this November. Oh, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I was just telling somebody earlier today. Uh, 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 this this right here, is, uh, uh, my life, I, I, I tell JT all the time, I had a good life until JT came around. <laughs> and with JT, before JT came around, I was on the way of looking towards to getting out and doing more, my retirement thing. I, I was going to just uh, have a couple of high school kids come in here, show them the trade. Uh, I had everything totally automated, and I was going to start working on my houses. That's what I was going to do. I was going to just go into the real estate, start working on my houses. I wasn't doing any service calls anymore, um, and my life was good. JT showed up on the, on, on, on the screen, on the scene, and now I'm actually out doing service calls again. So now my schedule, uh, uh, I do service calls Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you see me with my uniform on. I go out and I do service calls. So I can actually give y'all content. I'm actually recording the repairs and stuff so I can actually start uploading and actually to keep up to date with everything that's going on out in the industry. Because I found out after I talked to first class and they went out there and started doing service calls, um, I had been out of the van for so long, some of the information I gave them wasn't correct. So that's why I had to get back in the van so I can give y'all up to date uh, information. So I, 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 do, uh, I do a 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, a 1 o'clock, a 2 o'clock, and a 3 o'clock. Um, uh, uh, service call every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now I'm not going to. I'm not going to be driving ten miles and stuff. I go. With, I just go to two neighborhoods right in my right in my community. I go to two neighborhoods and do those service calls there. And uh, and then on Fridays, Fridays I'm off. But uh, my off when I say I'm off Friday, I'm actually going to be. Uh, I'm here working on the school. And on Saturdays, I'm here working. On, on Mondays, I'm here working on school. And on the weekends, I'm going to be back down at the houses that I have, actually uh, fixing those and, and, and getting those. Uh, I guess you would say I'm going to be actually uh, supervising those. I'm going to bring my contractor back and let him actually catch me up so I can actually get caught up and actually get uh, get on the inside of it before the wintertime is up. So uh, I'm going to actually start doing that. And that's my schedule. Like I say, uh, I, I do three days in the truck, uh, two days here. I do a Monday here. I do Monday and Friday here. In the school, fixing the YouTube studio and stuff, and then on Saturdays I'm gonna be going out checking on what they've done throughout the week at the houses and getting videos and stuff there. But up until then, up until I met JT, I had a good life, and he made me come out of retirement. All right, what's the name of the organization for appliance repair tech that's meeting in, in Tampa? Uh, it's UA United Services of America. That's the name of it. You, if you uh, if you type that in, United Services of America. You can actually find out that organization, and that that if you go to that, uh, the, uh, we have a week long uh, meeting down there, and all the manufacturers come. So when all the manufacturers come, they actually do uh, hands on training. So you have uh, every manufacturer be there, and they'll bring actual equipment there, and they'll actually let you do hands on training. So you can you can, and they have actual uh, they have other business owners there. I, I mean the real the real business owners, the Dean Landers, the Paul McDaniel. Uh, all those guys who actually wrote the blue book, who actually uh, have, have uh, what we call industry leaders in our uh, industry, they're there teaching uh, teaching actual business classes. So you, they have two, they have they break it up. They have the business portion and they have the technical portion. So if I was to go and take my technicians, I could take my technician all week. They can go to nothing but technical stuff. Um, I can go to all the business stuff. What I normally do, I normally uh, I normally go there and I go to uh, go to the actual business portion of it. Uh, I'm more concerned with the business portion of it. But uh, a lot of times people break it up. You know, some manufacturers they they not maybe not be familiar with their stuff. They go to that manufacturer's uh, technical stuff and then they go to the business portion. And what they do, they have multiple sessions. So uh, if you if you if something if sometimes if if, uh, if you want to go to a training class, a technical training class. But you also want to do a business class, and then at the same time, when later that day or the next day, it'll, it'll come back again. So you, you, can, you can do both if you like. All right, Jay Bigham, San Antonio from Chicago. Hey, how you doing? Uh, uh, double AJWS. Uh, weekend runs with the warranty company. Would they pay more if you take the job on the weekend? Uh, some of them will. Some of them will depend on the customer. Uh, depend on the customer. Uh, if, if, if somebody, if they can, depend on the amount of, depend on the availability in your area. If they can't find somebody in your area who would who service the weekend, 
and the customer can only be there on the weekend, they might then pay more. But it's not gonna be it's not gonna it's not gonna be like uh it's not gonna be like the job where they're gonna give you double time or, or anything like that. They just gonna offer you the call. All right, Bianca. All right, left a lot. Thank you. No problem. Um, Byron Randall. I love the hustling mentality. No problem. Thanks, man. All right, no problem. Thank you. So if you attend the boot camp, you're not entitled to the material online, correct? Yeah, you can't do uh before you do hit the boot camp is the exact same thing as online. But yeah, no, you uh, you don't get an online uh you don't get a login to the online. That's something totally different. Baron Randall, is there a washing machine wholesaler for parts? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about there. If you're asking if there uh if you need to get parts, uh yeah, you um you, you do there's a couple of different manufacturers. And uh, when you come to appliance boot camp, you can actually find those, or you can go online for uh, parts wholesalers. Um, you got like Marcon, you got like uh, Cashwells, DNL, Fox. Depending on what region you live in in the country, they got they got they got Tribbles. They got they got a bunch of different ones. You just go in for uh, a parts uh, look for a wholesaler. And what you do once you register your LLC, um, I tell you to actually open up a cash account. Uh, don't open up a credit a cash account. Uh, that way, whatever you get, you pay cash for. Uh, some people open up a credit account, uh, but I say don't open up a credit account because sometimes they uh, uh, they get hurt because they don't they uh, they they buy stuff on credit and they see all that money coming in and they don't pay their stuff off in time. And after a month or two, the credit limit goes up to get to the point where they haven't paid their, their bill off. They can't get any more parts, and then they uh, uh, they don't have any money to pay for the parts they already got. So I say don't do a, a credit account, uh, do a cash account. So whatever you pay for, whatever you get, you pay for. All right. So what I'm going to do is getting a little late. Um, I'm getting ready to get, uh, I'm getting ready to uh, slide out of here. Uh, the next class, I'm gonna be, uh, the next uh, the next time I come to you live. Uh, hopefully I can have a new camera set up, and I'm gonna actually try to do uh, show y'all how I actually uh, automated my business. It'll be how you can actually automate your business and go paperless. Uh, uh, our appliance group, our appliance company, my company, is totally automated and totally paperless. So I can operate my company from anywhere in the world as long as I got an internet uh, access. And I'm going to show you all how you can do the same uh, with your businesses and how you can actually automate your business and how you can actually save yourself, how I cut out uh, three to four hours of work, for, uh, work uh, from my actual daily work schedule. Uh, by automating my business so i'm going to show you how to automate your business uh next time i come out that's the next that's what the next class is going to be on how to automate your business uh, once again i want to thank you all for uh for coming in and um and staying with me uh this afternoon and um, i'm ready to get out of here and go home all right thanks